Access, access, united we're strong. We won't go away because we know you're wrong. Access, access, you've had your way too long. We're here and we're gonna stay. Hi, my name's Gary Arnold. Welcome to Chicago Adapt Productions. Today we have as our guest Bill Bogdan. He's the disability liaison for the Illinois Secretary of State. Welcome, Bill, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, today. It's a pleasure to be here, Gary. I look forward to our discussion on our parking program for persons with disabilities. Parking for people with disabilities. Uh, before we know it, it's going to be 2014. And in 2014, a lot's going to change in Illinois in terms of parking for, for people with disabilities. Um, why don't you uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that? What, what's going to happen uh, come January 1st, 2014, if you're a holder of a disability placard? Well, uh, back in 2012, the Illinois General Assembly uh, unanimously passed House Bill 5624, which will become effective January 14, 2014. Um, they passed this bill to obviously address the widespread fraud and abuse of uh, parking placards and disability license plates. And basically, uh, under this new law, it requires the Secretary of State's office to have every uh, person that's been issued a permanent disability placard recertify, if you will, with our office to ensure that they meet the new eligibility criteria for the meter exempt parking. So basically, uh, in May of this year, the Secretary of State's office kicked up its renewal program where we're contacting all 683,000 people that have been issued a permanent disability placard in the state of Illinois, requiring them to go back to their doctor and have their doctor certify that they meet the eligibility criteria for the new placard or they meet the new eligibility criteria for the meter exempt placard. And then once we get that application, we go ahead and we issue the appropriate placard. Okay. So you, met, you said uh, widespread abuse and fraud. Um, just how widespread are, are, are we talking? What kind of impact is it having on Illinois? Well, the fraud and abuse of the parking program for persons with disabilities is a serious problem, as you know. And it's, um, it's very disheartening when able-bodied people use a, a placard or a disability license plate that belongs to a family member or a friend without the authorized holder being present just to go ahead and park, whether it's to park at a meter without the, the payment of the meter or to park in an accessible spot. And basically, when people abuse the, those spaces, they're really uh, making it that much harder for people with disabilities to go about their day because, as we know, parking is a premium everywhere we park. And those parking spaces are, you know, sometimes obviously very difficult to get and when they take up these accessible parking spaces it's uh, really uh, hampers the individuals with disabilities. Yeah so you're you, I, I remember over the years I've seen you on television a number of times um, uh, with TV crews or newspaper crews doing kind of investigative re sure. reports and uh, and so this uh, uh, news about fraud has, has been around for, for quite a while. Um, why the big push recently to, to do something about that and, and to make a change in the law? Sure. Well, one of Secretary of State Jesse White's goals is obviously to reduce the fraud and the abuse of this program. You know, he has um, uh, you know directed his Illinois Secretary of State police to do enforcement checks or enforcement stings, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the uh, state of Illinois to uh, you know ticket violators or ticket people who abuse the uh, the provisions of the program. You know, one of the the big significant changes that we've also made with the program to address the fraud is Chicago is always notorious for dead people voting mm -hmm. while they're mm -hmm. also notorious for dead people parking and starting uh, January 1st of this year um, we passed a law now that uh, makes it a class A misdemeanor for individuals who are caught or ticketed using a deceased person's placard which carries up to a $2,500 fine and a one-year driver's license suspension so we want to make that very very clear that that type of abuse will no longer be tolerated and then um, if you will um, in in, in the state of Illinois, November is also designated as Accessible Parking Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. So the governor will put out a proclamation and it will encourage law enforcement agencies throughout the state to do uh, step up enforcement of the parking program and issue tickets for people who abuse the program. We kind of chose November to do our, our big uh, details because of the fact that we have the changing in the weather. Mm -hmm. where we're moving now into our winter weather and it seems to be that those spots are always abused more when they have inclement weather out there. And then in addition, it's the holiday season, so a lot of people are out and about doing their holiday shopping. Right. Uh, we uh, for this will be our eighth year in a row now where Secretary White has kicked off the uh, uh, 
parking enforcement on Black Friday where we target large shopping malls throughout the state of Illinois yeah. and we ticket people who abuse the program. Last year we were very successful during that uh, enforcement period. We ticketed 160 drivers statewide uh, totaling in over $71,000 in fines. Wow, okay. So. All right. Well, that's one way to address revenue in Illinois, <laughs> uh, I guess. Endless. <laughs> um, so you mentioned, I think I, you mentioned, and I, I read somewhere that over over 600,000 uh, uh, placards in Illinois right now. And if, if I remember the last census, I mean, there's maybe just under a million people with disabilities in mm -hmm. Illinois. So I don't know if, if 600,000 placards is an accurate reflection of, of the number of disabled drivers in Illinois or not. Um, but, but what are you seeing now with the applications? Uh, uh, are we getting that many applications for, for the new placards? Well, right now we're in the middle of our renewal program. We roughly had, when we started our program, 683,000 people that had a permanent, have been issued a permanent disability uh, placard. Uh, basically, what we've done now is um, we partnered with the Illinois Medical Society. Back in February of this year, we sent out over 68,000 letters to physicians all across the state of Illinois, and we even uh, piggybacked a few physicians in the Missouri area, in the Indiana area, and in the Wisconsin area, um, and even in the Iowa area uh, for, uh, you know, basically trying to educate physicians about the changes in the program, letting them know that we need physicians to step up to the plate, do their part, and ensure that their patients meet the eligibility criteria before approving them for a plate or parking placard. Mm. And that's something that uh, we've been uh, very uh, fortunate to work, like I mentioned, with the Illinois Med Society uh, to get that word out. We've also um, worked with the Illinois General Assembly to, uh, for the first time, actually put uh, fines on physicians who fraudulently or uh, provide false information on an application. So if we have a physician that we can prove, you know, falsified information on an application, that physician now can face up to fines up to $1,000, have their driver's license suspended, and also have their uh, medical professional license suspended for a period of time if we can prove that they're providing false information on an application. So with a lot of these tools in place, we really hope to try to address a lot of the fraud and the abuse that's taking place. Have, have you found instances of that in the past of physicians inaccurately uh, signing off on, on, on forms? Well, I think a lot of times physicians want to do the right thing and they may not know all of the provisions that come with the parking program for persons with disabilities. So they may only look at it as, uh, at, you know, as the best interest of their patient. And we hope now with this education campaign uh, program that we launched, we also have a, a, a guide that we put out mm -hmm. uh, called the uh, Parking Program for Persons with Disabilities, a Medical Professionals Guide, which basically explains all the provisions to physicians, um, you know, about the program, ask, ans helps answer answer questions and so forth. So as I mentioned, we really need the doctors to step up to the plate and do their part to address some of the fraud and the abuse that's going on. Yeah. And they need to be, uh, you know, upfront with their patients. If their patient does not necessarily meet all the eligibility criteria, they need to tell them. Right. I think another component of your outreach and awareness campaign leading up to the new law implementation is um, a, a flyering. Is that correct? I, I work at Access Living mm -hmm. and we've had some volunteers going around in the neighborhood and I think uh, uh, putting leaflets on cars that have the, have the dis disabled placards on them. Uh, what kind of information is being shared then when people are doing that flyering? Yeah, well, that flyering that took place in August was, um, you know, under the direction of the city of Chicago, the city of Chicago Department of Finance, and working with the Chicago uh, Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. And primarily, what they really wanted to do is is to help spread the word, uh, get the word out to uh, drivers uh, with disabilities uh, that use parking placards and disability license plates that the laws are going to be changing and they need to go in and renew their parking placards you know, with the Secretary of State's office prior to the new law going into effect come January. Okay. And um, I think they've, uh, you know, they le leafleted almost, I think, close to 3,000 different vehicles, you know, with those uh, uh, flyers, you know, helping to educate drivers about these, some of the changes that are taking place. Okay. So let's say I'm a, a, a driver, I have a disability. Um, how is this going to impact me? I, I, I have a placard, I, I, I have a, a diagnosed a, a disability. What's this going to 
mean bottom line for me come 2014. Okay, well, one of the biggest significant changes is under our current program in Illinois, we exempt everybody that has a parking placard or a disability license plate from the payment of parking meter fees. And under our new program, which takes effect January 1st, we actually have a tiered system in our permanent disability placards now. So uh, we've introduced our new, brand new yellow parking placard. This placard will entitle the authorized holder to be meter exempt uh, from the payment of parking meter fees if they've been issued this parking placard. And it sets up specific criteria now that the individual must meet in order to be eligible for it. Uh, number one, they must be a valid, uh, they must have a valid Illinois driver's license unless they are a child under the age of 18 and capable of driving but we require a valid driver's license. Number two, you have to have a disability which impairs your ability to feed a parking meter. And in a nutshell, they have four different criteria uh, that the legislature had passed, but basically they have to meet one of the four. Uh, the individual with a disability cannot manage or manipulate coins mm -hmm. to, to uh, reach a parking meter uh, due to the lack of hand dexterity or uh, arm strength. Uh, they cannot reach a height of over 42 inches in height, uh, you know, to actually feed a meter or mm -hmm. obtain coins. Um, they use a wheelchair or other device for mobility and are unable to uh, approach a parking meter. And then the last criteria is um, cannot walk 20 feet uh, without stopping to rest due to a, a orthopedic, neurological, or cardiovascular uh, condition, which the degree of debilitation is so severe that it almost completely impedes their ability to walk. Mm -hmm. And then it will be up to the physician to determine if the applicant meets one of the four, and they will approve uh, them for the appropriate parking card. Okay. If the physician says, yeah, they meet one of the eligibility criteria, they will be issued the uh, meter exempt placard. If they don't meet the eligibility for the meter exempt placard, they will be issued our blue parking card. And this parking card will allow the authorized holder to park in any accessible spot, just kind of as they do now, um, at a mall, at a grocery store, wherever they go. Um, and it will also allow them to park at accessible parking spaces on street, but it will no longer carry the meter exemption. So okay. if they park at a parking meter, they'll starting January 1, they will actually have to feed the meter or pay the parking meter fees in there. The plaque, this blue placard will no longer exempt the individual from the payment of that parking meter. Okay. I notice you have a lot of other uh, examples of, of placards here. Oh, sure. Uh, um, why, don't you, what, what, why, why did you bring those? What, what are they, they here for? Well, I really wanted to, you know, um, have your listeners really understand the, the, uh, the widespread fraud and abuse that takes place with the program and some of the lengths that people actually go through to abuse the program. I brought with me some samples of all fraudulent parking cards. And these are parking placards that have been confiscated by various law enforcement police officers across the state. Mm -hmm. But these individuals uh, resort to making their own parking placards, whether they Photoshop them or what have you. Um, but they basically make their own cards. They copy legal cards, make copies of, of parking placards. We have some reports of placards being for sale on eBay or Craigslist. And when we get reports of that, our office works with uh, you know that to get those placards removed we have uh, stories of placards being sold at uh, you know various uh, stores uh, your local taverns uh, you know in some instances there's been reports of uh, flea markets or what have you where people go and sell them and then people get uh, you know creative where they'll sell them all on their own mm -hmm. uh, you know we had reports of uh, college-age students that were you know made copies of their grandmother's parking placard and they were selling it to other college-age students in order to get the cards oh, they must have been in business school <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> and then another type of the abuse is um, Illinois changed to a punch card system with our punch cards and now it's led to people um, you know altering the expiration dates on cards mm. where you know you can see in this example here the placard actually expired in April and they hole punched out the month Dece December and taped the hole punch onto it uh. so a lot of people come up with creative ways to try to beat the system and, you know, Secretary White has made it very clear that the, the uh, fraud and abuse of those types of placards will not be tolerated. It carries a Class A misdemeanor, which is, again, punishable by a $2,500 fine. And it's a one-year driver's license revocation if we catch an individual uh, using an altered parking placard or, you know, a, a fraudulent parking card. So, and, but it's one of those things that happen. And this is why a lot of these drastic changes needed to be made to really address the fraud and the abuse that's uh, going on in the system. Yeah. Well, it sounds like some good systems are being put in place to try to uh, stop that uh, abuse going forward. 
Um, so, so if I'm someone and I haven't uh, uh, filled out the new application yet, but I need to get a new placard, um, mm -hmm. do, do I go to my physician first and, and have him or her sign off on things, or do I need to get an application from the Secretary of State's office, take that to my physician, and then turn it in? What, what's the process that well, someone who hasn't sure. done it yet should follow? You've got a couple of ways you can do it. I mean, I, um, we have uh, tried to mail out applications to every individual that has a permanent disability placard. You know, we have all their addresses, so if you haven't moved in the last four years, you should receive your application. If for some reason you haven't received your letter in the mail from our office, you can always go to our website mm -hmm. at www.cyberdriveillinois.com. That's C-Y-B-E-R-D-R-I-V-E illinois.com you can go right to our website go to the publication section and download the application that's another way you can get it you can visit any of our secretary of state drivers facilities and all of those uh, our, all of our facilities have applications that you can pick up and then in some instances um, your local physician may have them if it's a, a doctor's office that uh, you know deals with a lot of individuals with disabilities or specializes in knees or hips or or what have you they may uh, you know they have a bulk of applications already printed out and be ready to go. Mm -hmm. So there's many ways the individual could obtain one. The most important thing is, is that people, you know, go in and renew their placards on, you know, in a timely manner so we can go ahead and get out the new parking card prior to. If you have a current card, you know, your current card um, will expire come January, uh, I mean, will expire in 2014. However, come January 1st, that placard will no longer be eligible for the meter exempt parking. Okay. So you must, you know, have this yellow parking placard in order to get it. Okay. Uh, and then in addition to it, the one big thing that we have to address too is our disabled license plate holders. Uh, and this is going to be a big change that, um, that we need uh, cooperation with from the disability community. The Secretary of State's office has not developed or did not come out with a disability meter exempt plate. Okay. So if you use disability license plates and you use those plates, starting January 1, those plates will no longer exempt you from the payment of that parking meter unless you hang this yellow parking placard up as well. Okay. And that's going to be very important uh, and very imperative that our disability community realize that. A lot of people use those disabled plates because they don't want to fendango with the placard or they forget to put the placard up. But starting January 1, if you have disabled plates, you must also hang this yellow placard up in order to be exempt from the payment of parking meters. And, you know, we, we don't have a meter, we're not going to come out with a meter exempt disability license plate. Okay. And I've had many in the disability community argue about that, but, the, you know, and then they want two, pla two meter exempt placards or whatever, but the rationale is the person with a disability can only be in one car at a time. Right. So you need to take that uh, appropriate placard and figure out, you know, which vehicle you're going to use it in. Right. Um, are there any other concerns uh, uh, that you're hearing from the disability community or, or from the general community about the, the, the new law and the new placards? Well, some of the other big changes that take effect is also starting January 1 will affect our out-of-state drivers. Starting January 1st, um, out-of-state placards and out-of-state disability license plates will no longer exempt the holder from the payment of parking meter fees. The only one that's going to be exempt is our Illinois parking placard. Now, out-of-state placards and out-of-state license plates, you'll still be allowed to park in any accessible spot at a mall or a grocery store. You'll still be allowed to park in any accessible spot on street, mm -hmm. but come January 1st, you're no longer going to have the meter exemption uh, be, uh, you know, overall applied, and that's going to come to a change. So I've gotten some feedback, you know, from people that basically have stated that, you know, their disability doesn't leave when they cross state lines. Right. But, you know, one of the big significant problems that law enforcement has is there's not a national database of plaque cards, you know, where they're issued from other states. And our state of Indiana now issues plaque cards that are non-expiring. So they have no expiration date on them. Our state of Iowa issues placards that are non-expiring. There's no expiration date on them. And we find with placards with no expiration date tend to live on long after people do not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the big reasons why in Illinois we do a recertification mm. uh, process every four years with our cards. Okay, great. All right. Was well, there anything uh, we didn't cover that you think uh, uh, our, our watchers, uh, the audience, and disability community should know about the changes sure. that are coming up? Well, one thing that I really think is important and it would really, really put a stop to a lot of the fraud and abuse that's going on there is that people with disabilities themselves 
they need to step up to the plate and they need to take personal responsibility and not allow their friends or family members to use their parking placards or their disability license plates where they're, when they're not in the vehicle. And often the times, you know, it's, if they can take that step and say, hey, I'm going to borrow your car, mom, well, make sure you don't use park in the accessible spots, yeah. you know, uh, and, and that can really, you know, do their part to stop the yeah. fraud and the abuse. Yeah. Another big pet peeve of mine is when people park in the access aisles. And right. I hear that a lot in the disability community. You know, that access aisle is your diagonally striped line adjacent to the space. And often the times what happens is even vehicles with placards and plates will park in there. And what does that do when you park in that spot? That impedes, you know, access for individuals with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I've been disabled all my life, but that when cars park in an access aisle, that's the biggest handicap to me mm -hmm. because now I can't safely get in and get out of my vehicle. Yeah. Um, I tell this story, you know, I have three, uh, three small children at home and you know, when I'm out in public with them by myself and I need to get them in the car and someone parks in an access aisle, now I can't do my fatherly duties to make sure that my daughter is properly buckled into her car seat because right. some person is parked in that access aisle and they're blocking my access. Right. And that leaves me very upset and only gives me two options. You know, it's the yeah. option I have to wait for that individual to return or I have to look for a trusting soul in the parking lot, give him my car keys and say, hey, can you back right. out my car so I can get in? And now they're driving away with my car. Right. No. Yeah. But, uh -huh. um, but no, and I really think um, all can decide is that you really need personal responsibility yeah. of people with disabilities. But, but why is that important? I mean, who is it hurting if, uh, you know, if I lend out my placard, you know, for, you know these parking companies, you know, some sure. say it's just a racket, you know, charging us too much money. You know, what's it going to hurt if I give it to my brother or my sister if they just got to run out to the store real quick? Well, if you have a disagreement with, with the laws or what have you, it doesn't, doesn't give you the right to break a law because you disagree with the law. Mm -hmm. And if, um, you know, if you loan out your placards or give out, freely give out your parking placards and you're stopped by law enforcement, uh, police have the ability to confiscate any placard that they see being used illegally. And once they confiscate it, it does impact the individual with a disability because you will lose that placard for a significant period of time until the court proceedings are done or until we get the placard, uh, we're able to return that placard to you. Yeah. And I see a lot of, I get calls every day from uh, people with disabilities that are very upset because the police have confiscated their card and it's their, you know, one of their family members that were using it without them. And you know, they always say, hey, well, I didn't know they were using it, but you know what? The chances are you need to be responsible for that and make sure they're not using it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's where. And if people, when they abuse that, this program, it makes it that much harder on people who really, truly need that program. Right use it yeah. and I think you see it all the time when you're out and about and you see those spaces taken up by individuals who shouldn't be parking there. yeah yeah I think you hit it on the head for me right there is you know, it, yeah when there's abuse it makes it harder on the people who who actually really need it and so I really appreciate what the Secretary of State's office has done what you have done in your uh, commitment to, to you know, collaborating with the disability community and the general community to to find a system that, that that's going to work and to, to make sure people are aware of it and people start implementing uh, sure. the system. So awesome. I really appreciate uh, taking the time to, to join us today and uh, uh, keep up the good work and, and good luck in 2014 uh, when, the, when the implementation uh, occurs. Well, thank you very much, Gary. And as uh, Secretary White has always said, and his, one of his main, uh, main goals is if you don't belong here, please don't park there. We need your cooperation to make sure that those spaces stay open for those that truly need them. So thank you very much and I uh, look forward to coming back on the show and giving you an update on how we're doing. Oh, we'd love to have you back. So. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And uh, thank you for joining us on uh, Chicago Adapt Productions. I want choices in right. Choices in right. Choices in right in my life. I want your charity Are you to be paid to care for me? I want choices and rights in my life And I don't want to be in your care I to be put someplace out there I want choices and rights in my life Choices and rights That's where we've got to find Choices and rights